Welcome back, guys, to another podcast. This is CB Rifles podcast. My name is CB. I'm the TO organizer for CB Rifles. Um, probably the biggest tournament for competitive Com Congress Blade currently. And I'm co-hosting this podcast with Corto, who is another tournament organizer who has been organizing a core tournament. And we will be working together a lot in the future as well. And with me today, I've got uh, two very special guests. And I'm really happy that they are willing to join us. It's Mask Flames and Rockstar. Um, they're both from Surf Slayer, or as they say it, they are Surf Slayers. Um, so we get to speak to them about themselves, the players, uh, the team, of course, and their long history in the tournament scene. Um, and we also, of course, go back to the week two that we just had. Um, it's been very exciting on Castle. We've had some big games. And we also got some big games coming up as well on the next Sunday. So we will have to talk about those um, just as well as all the other things. Um, we got some predictions as well going on on the Discord, so we'll dive into that later. Um, but first of all, Corto, how did you enjoy the the round two? Uh, it's um, it's a nice one, and uh, the map is uh, a different map as uh, last week, mm -hmm. so we can see uh, a fight more uh, with more impact and uh, more compact. <laughs> yep. And uh, we see some different strategy to defend the, the last point and uh, it was interesting yeah definitely was interesting um definitely something we can talk about later we saw very different strategies on on a few games um depending on what games you watched um so that definitely was cool to see um mask and rockstar you guys have been playing blame Elias against uh, with surf slayers of course um you got the revenge actually because last season you also played against them on the same map on cora castle um how was it to get your revenge against them Oh, uh, it was it felt really good, uh, especially that uh, we lost last time against them to zero, and now we worked uh, on the map uh, a lot, and we managed to get uh, our revenge and won them to zero. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, so again, congratulations on that win. Um, we got blame or we got Elias here last last week, so and he was pretty confident he would win against you guys. Um, so I'm very yeah. excited to hear about you why he definitely wasn't going to win this one. Uh, we'll talk about that as well. Um, so before we introduce you guys, uh, I want to do the same thing that I did with Elias last week, and this is um, overpowered or underrated. And I'm just <laughs> going to give you three things that you can say under overpowered or underrated. Okay. Um, okay. I'll start with you, Mask, and, and then I'll go to Rockstar. All right, uh, Mask, here we go. Get the fracts. Uh, Overboard. All right, that's interesting. Um, Core Castle on defense. I would say overpowered as well, especially on the camp. Okay, okay. And um, Roxer as your co captain in front of Slayers? I, I would agree it's overpowered. Ah. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, a mask, um, Roxer as a player? Uh, yes. uh, <laughs> I would say he's underrated. All right, all right. That's not true to say, though. All right, uh, Roxanne, these are for you then. Um, here we go. Are, are you ready? Ready. All right. Uh, che che the new Chevalier yeah, unit. Underrated, 100%. All right, all right. Good, good to hear that. Um, Mass Flames as a team captain. I think underrated, yeah. Mm -hmm. And as a player? Overrated, 100%. <laughs> good, 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 good. No, All no, right. I actually underrated, but yeah. All right, that's good to, do, good to hear from you. Yeah. Um, so something that uh, I do think most players might even know you about, aside from Surf Slayers, is actually being the Flames group. Um, whenever you see a group of Flames in your Siege Battle, you know you have lost it if you're against it, or you have won it when you are playing with them. Um, so. You guys have been playing together for such a long time, and uh, Corto, you've got all the stats for us ready for the tournament as well. Um, Mask and Roxer, can you just just tell us how, how did Surf Slayer start and what what is the team like? I think Mask can start this off because he knows more. I have mm -hmm. a goldfish memory always. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, actually, how it started it was with uh, me, Roxer, and uh, Neoxus also known as uh, What the Flame. Uh, we wanted to make a team for the quarter tournament uh, in season eight, I think it was. And actually the job was supposed to be on uh, Roxar and Neoxus, 
but it turned out to be me doing the recruitment, the management, and uh, other stuff throughout the team. And throughout my like playing the game, I was looking more into like team play groups, like most likely groups of five, groups of three. Mm -hmm. And I started the recruitment uh, to the team uh, in this way. I didn't really look into like individual gameplay. Mm -hmm. I was more into like uh, groups of three, groups of five team play, because this is what it really matters mm -hmm. throughout uh, the tournament. It's all about team play. Because yeah. sometimes uh, when you're planning or something like that, you need to make uh, like, like a job of three people, a job of five people, sometimes seven, you don't know, depends on the, your strategy. Mm -hmm. And this is where the recruitment takes part. So I always recruited in groups less than individual players. Yeah, that's interesting. So how did you find those groups then? Uh, throughout my, I used to play in like in the ranks, hmm. for example, uh, Jackie's group from EU2, yep. I had my eyes on them, and from the EU3, I, for example, I saw uh, Yomi's group, for example, it was Yomi, Madrika, and uh, Otoba. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys really worked really, really good, and not a lot of people know about them. Uh, at the beginning, of course, not right now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how it usually starts. Like, I usually keep my eye on players that is, like, not known. You know, they don't usually speak a lot, so people don't know about them. I just focus on their gameplay. When I'm playing, I was like, oh, this guy plays this unit really good. Mm -hmm. He reacts really good. And then this is how it starts. And uh, I, get in, I get in contact with them. Yeah, nice. So you're really scouting actively for groups of players or good players. Yeah. That is yeah, interesting. Yeah, for sure. All right. Yeah, uh, Roxar, what about your perspective with the team? Yeah, like, I'd, I was actually wanted to make my own team but then mass <laughs> came to me and yeah we just and noxus we just started making a team like he said we said oh we're gonna work hard and then it was like just mass doing everything we were just too lazy to do anything <laughs> and yeah like then uh, we suggested a few players like mass said we were always looking for groups or like people that already played with with each other so they have some kind of synergy and yeah, and I think then we went to Korto because we heard like Korto was like one of the biggest tournaments then next mm -hmm. to CBL, right? And we just, it was perfect to test our strength out, right? And it was good because actually we, I don't know how, but we just like a new team. I, not, players were like known, but it was still a new team. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you make a superstar team at the start, it's usually not going to work out that you're just going to clap with yeah. everyone. And we managed to do all everyone won the tournament and yeah then we just kept on going kept on improving yeah yeah that's very nice uh Corto, do you actually have the the stats ready to just just like say whatever you know about surf slayers in a tournament because it's it's pretty impressive how you guys started out uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but for me it's uh it's uh, all, all team and uh, maybe not not about uh, this team, but uh, the guy inside the team, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Mask and Roxo, uh, may if I play uh, at um, at each event, each court tournament, and uh, uh, yeah, each time they they show a good uh, a good play, mm -hmm. a good game play. Uh, so for me, they they, they are in the in most best of team uh, actually. Yeah, definitely true. Yeah. So Thank you. you said that like so you guys started in season eight for the core tournament. You won it, like you said, you basically like zero almost zero losses, right? And then yeah. um in season yeah. ten there was another core tournament, you got second place there. Um you lost to Plebs, who then won the C B rifles the season after that. So the Plebs are definitely like on fire with Temple Shot as the team captain. Um so um, you, you two guys seem to be going pretty hard against each other right now. Um, and also, like right now, when we go to the standings, you can see that you guys and Plebs are doing really well right now. Um, but you also played in the CBL, right? In the fall fight, October 21. Um, you got four plays there, uh, F right behind Plebs, Pondegard, and Lamaland. And then the Winter War, December 21, you won it. First place against Plebs, uh, followed by Wings Club and Pondegard. Um, so, You've been uh, since court tournament. You've been like playing consistently for the top three places. 
Um, I guess CB Rifles last season was a bit of a surprise for most players. How? What happened there? Uh, I think our like most uh, like weakest point is mm. that we underestimate our opponents. Mm. Uh, this is how actually we beat ourselves. <laughs> it's not that the other teams are better than us or anything like that. Uh, of course, there's like outstanding teams, uh, but uh, like like I said, the most thing that we do is we underestimate our enemies sometimes, mm -hmm. and this is how we actually lose. But I from now on, I think we should never underestimate and work really hard. Mm -hmm. yeah, this was uh, one of the things. Mask. It was. It's not that we underestimated the team. We just didn't prepare mm. as hard as we would. Like I think a good example is Pongard. I think we were the only ones in that group last season where we tied with them. I think they won yeah. everything now. True. And I, yeah, like I think a lot of people might say it's an excuse. Yes, you could say, but I just gave that example. And I also in CBL against Lamas, we actually didn't know that they are that strong. At that point, it was like Keyboard Warriors that we beat in previous round, which was... I think a lot of people know Keyboard Warriors as well. They were like one of the strongest teams. Mm -hmm. They reached finals, like the first CBL. Yeah. And after we bet them, we we just we were just cocky. We were like, okay, it's over. Like, it's... it's, it's yeah. Over. <laughs> we get clapped to all by Lamas. <laughs> and from that moment, we just knew who Lamas were. And in the next CBL, we were prepared really hard for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you good could to say be. it's the same now. Yeah, it is very interesting. Like Lama or the the Lama guys, they are really impressive. Um, I saw them first in the RA tournament two, which I casted with the general combo, and they they pull out so many crazy strategies. It's it's really cool to see. Um, and a lot of their guys are now in kebabs, I think, right? So yeah, yeah. So especially with the uh, Luan Luan Kur, sexy kebab. Yeah, those guys are are pretty strong together as well. They've been playing together, like kind of like you guys are doing as well, like trying to form groups and keep playing together with those groups as well. You can see them always playing together in ranked. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're saying, so your weak point is not preparing uh, to maybe always at, to the best of your ability. But if you do, you seem to be doing really well. Like you said, I think the game against Pondegaard last season was the one that actually got me thinking, okay, so now I do believe that you guys are like trolling and maybe a little bit in the, in the in the in the CB rifles league uh, for the first season, because you were the only ones to, who were able to actually compete against Pondegaard, except of course in the final where Plebs uh, beat them quite convincingly. Um, so yeah, that that was just a bit of a, an off season for you then, I guess. Yeah, you could say. So. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, that's good to hear. Um, so then on to this season, uh, how do you like it so far? Um, to be honest, uh, like the meta right now for this season mm -hmm. is uh, really good. Like in terms of range, you can play range. In yeah. terms of melee, you can play melee. Before the Siladars uh, rework, mm -hmm. I would say the melee was kind of uh, unbalanced. Mm. Uh, but now with the Siladar coming, you can actually counter Reapers, for example, because Reapers was like smashing anything in front of it. Yeah. When it comes to Cav, after the Kashyyyk uh, nerf, it was really nice. Like now you can play Cataphract, you can play Kashyyyk, you can choose whatever cav you want to play. Um, I hope for the next season, not like broken units come out. Uh, but for sure, there's still some things that needs to be balanced and worked on. But compared to previous seasons and other things like that, I think the game is like really, really, really good when it comes to balancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's actually so surprising that you say that because I think this is the, the the thing that one of the things that the game is being blamed for the most, right? It is the balance. Um, but I agree. I think the games have been really interesting. It's not like two or three units that are being spammed all the time. And yeah, I agree. It's it's a it's a good mix between ranged calf and 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 melee as well. It is interesting. And what what about the the weapon classes, uh, Roxer? What is your opinion on those? Oh, like this is really interesting actually because I don't know, you could see our game, for example, against Blame Elias. You could just see like what we were spamming, you could say. We were just spamming mm -hmm. Nodachis, Polexes. Because like the this tournament is around more of like killing units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you if you kill a hero, sure. Like if you kill a lot of heroes, the units are kinda useless. 
but it's usually whoever wins the trades wins the game except if it's like a snowball and yeah nudachi right now with the buffs is like really really good for killing units breaking formation as well like because mm -hmm. i think alias could actually win against us if they would use maybe a more cc heavy classes because we were spamming calf at the end point mm -hmm. Wait, I think Nodachi and Polex right now are like the best classes. We don't even play short sword anymore because it's just yeah, I think it's kind of allowed. Mm -hmm. But uh, next season it will be interesting with the runes. It I think Polex will get a bit nerfed, you could mm -hmm. say. So it's gonna be interesting what's gonna be next season. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question about this mm -hmm. because do you think the the weapon is strong uh, for this skill with this skill or uh, with the, the rune? Uh, mm. The Polex? Yes. Yeah, Polex with the 5 second immunity is just so good because you can literally go and suicide for like special units because you cannot get CC. I mean, you can get CC'd by certain uh, ultimates like Dual Blade and then Polex and also Grab. Mm -hmm. But it's good because you cannot get CC'd. It's heavy armor and you still do a lot of damage and break formation as well. You can stop the calf. It's, I think the rune is just broken on Polex. Mm -hmm. But, but I, you, yes. have the, you have this on the Nodashi, on the Avalanche Ulti, uh, when you have Infury. You yes, can, exactly, uh, yeah. See. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. It's interesting. So uh, another thing, I talked to Brian about the Glaive. He's been playing the Glaive quite a bit as well. The, the Glaive has a similar rune as well, but we don't see that nearly as, as much. Um, what is for you the main reason why the Glaive doesn't get that opportunity to, to be played in the, in the competitive? I think the Glaive is, still can be played in competitive, but mm -hmm. it's not just uh, you can spam it like Polex, for example. The Glaive is right now is like more of a support class, more on, not like damage, because if you want to go damage, there's many other classes that you can mm -hmm. go. But Glaive right now is more of like support class, I would say. Okay. I would like to add here because Nodachi has so much life still that you can literally go inside of units or anything, mm -hmm. use Avalanche, for example, and you just life still all the way up. You can tank yeah. for days. Glaive cannot do that. Glaive can break formation, but it's just not going to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it just doesn't bring enough, mm -hmm. I guess, compared to Nodachi, Polex, uh, maybe yeah. Pike even. Yeah. Pike, so Pike is one of the weapons, I guess, that comes to mind when, you, when the meta would be more around focusing heroes, right? Which is yeah, what we saw a lot. We saw a lot of Pike Muscat um, before. Mm, yeah. Yes, but it really depends on the meta. Mm -hmm. Like for and it and the map as well. I would say, like for example, if you're playing Kura Castle, I wouldn't say you should spam Pike even without runes. Uh, I, w I still wouldn't spam Pikes because the map is like more of melee, mm -hmm. and for Pike to tank and go tank the damage you can break do like break formation a lot mm -hmm. but you will not survive uh for like heavy armor classes but for example if you play on wolfert they like the map is so open like you can use the pike and punish the enemy really hard in terms of uh, killing heroes uh enemy out of position and things like that yeah yeah i agree i agree yeah all right, it is interesting. Okay, we'll talk more about it later. Um, what I want to do right now is, is dive into the the games that have been played uh, last week. Are you, are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Yeah? All yeah. right, good, good, good. Um, we'll start with the play-in, go to the Rustic Division, and then go to the Feudal Division. Um, and then uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, so I'll bring it up on the screen. Um, you guys probably can see it right now, but you could, you could go to the challenge, but I'll, I'll just read it out loud and you, you get to hear it. Um, so the play in division is actually really interesting, in my opinion. Um, we are seeing that teams are actually like tying games. Um, they are winning some of them back and forth. Um, so the standings are pretty close right now. Uh, we got Impact Esports being the only one to have won two games in a row now. And then we got Wild Blood and, uh, with a tie and a win. Um, we got Argonautas and Crypta with two ties. And probably old school also with one tie and divinity and looking for team of course still without a win um so there's actually like four teams in that group that seem to be very competitive to each other impact esport hasn't lost yet um but of course they have to play it against some of the other teams that are like doing really well so 
it's definitely looking to be a really interesting like division to follow uh, they will, will hopefully all be joining like the the first and the second division next season um, either depending on what their standing ends up with but it's, it's been really interesting um, in terms of the uh, games that happened so Impact Esports won against Pelly Old School 2-0 uh, Crypta and Argonautas tied they both won their defenses if I'm correct and Divinity lost against Wildblood also in 2-0 so uh, have any of Corto or uh, any of you guys uh, have you watched the games from the play in division? Me yes, I yep. was. Uh, I see Pile Out School vs uh, Impact Sport, mm -hmm. and uh, Impact Sport show a very good uh, team play. They have a very nice strategy to to defend the last point. Mm -hmm. uh, like um, they have three three players with a Reaper on the wall between um, the supply the B supply point and the last point, and uh, they have um, defense uh, very high. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, 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 they def the last point very easy with this. And um, in attack, they show a very good strategy to to move, to separate the team and to to show. Typically, if I remember well, um, 10 players go uh, on the last point, on the, on the supply point, you know, uh, behind the last point. Mm -hmm. And the five players wait uh, just behind the just behind the door um, at the, the supply point, at B, B supply point, and they don't show us. They, they, they stay uh, behind the wall, and uh, when the team, when the, um, the defense move to the point where, where um, they move to, the, um, to help uh, behind the last point on the, the, the supply point, mm -hmm. at this moment, they go on the final point, and they fight, and they go back on the, the, the defenseur, and uh, very nice t uh, timing and nice team play. Yeah, yeah. So they seem to be very like, confident and also playing really well together. Um, especially the second game, I think that they played was was really really fast. So yeah, it was interesting to see. Um, I, I really enjoy Crypta watching them play. They also seem to be like fighting on different places than some other teams. Um, they were especially defending a lot inside the city, uh, which was something that we haven't seen too many times. So that was definitely interesting. Um, yeah, and I'm, I, I just have to watch more of the games, but like I said, playing division seems to be really interesting and I look forward to like watching more of those uh, teams as well. Uh, Roxor and Mass Flames, is, uh, have you like uh, maybe scrimmed against any of these teams or do you know any of these teams personally? We haven't scrimmed, but uh, I'm looking forward to impact on White Blood on how they perform mm -hmm. and I also look forward to the next season, what they will do as well. Yeah. Roxer, do you know about any of those? I know Wildblood and Argonaut. I think mm -hmm. Wildblood was in like a lot of tournaments, maybe a different team, but yeah. I think some players are experienced. So I would actually expect them to be top two at the end of the season. And then mm -hmm. I have Argonauts and see Impact is really strong. I think these three teams yeah. are going to be like top top four for sure i think mm -hmm. Me too. that's my prediction yeah that's interesting nice nice to hear from you like that yeah i i can see where you're coming from like the the top four is definitely i think a safe bet like looking for team obviously like a bunch of randos i uh, just pulled together just to, <laughs> to create a team out of all the players that wanted to play tournament um so we shouldn't expect too much from them uh because players will come and go and it's just a, a bit of a random team but uh, we, we just hope that they're having a lot of fun playing the tournament and get picked up by some other teams maybe um Definity and Pali old school uh, Definity don't know too much about them. Pelly Old School are all veterans that actually returned to the game because of the CB Rivals, which is really nice. I love you guys for doing that. Um, so yeah, again, these, these are players that haven't played the game for a long time maybe and they need to like, get going. And then Crypta is one of those EU2 teams that are doing really well. But obviously EU2 isn't as strong as EU1 normally. So you also, again, get them a little bit below Argonautas, uh, Wildblood. Wildblood has played a couple of the CBLs, I think you're right there. So, uh, yeah, interesting. All right, good, good, good. Thanks for your insights. And uh, we'll definitely get some of the playing teams into the podcast later as well. Um, okay, let's go to the Rustic Division. Um, because this one has been interesting, to say the least. At least one game, uh, which is one of that I was part of. And you guys have been watching it, so I know that. 
Um, so we'll talk about the Trike versus Kebabs game um, just a little bit, not too much, hopefully, um, but at least a little bit, um, but also all the other games. So for the standings, first of all, um, right now we have Odin's Legion with two wins. We have YAA with two wins. We have Kebabs with two wins. So they're all with six points in the lead, followed by Holy Crusaders with uh, look, one win, one loss on three points. And then we have two teams, Love and Devotion and Baguette Munchers with one tie. And then we have Chocolate Paladins all the way down on the standing on seventh place, together with Triarchy on eighth place with zero games and zero points. So um, Chocolate Paladins, definitely one of the surprises, I guess, um, at least for now. Of course, they have had a bit of a rough schedule um, having to play both, uh, let's see, uh, Kebabs and Odins. Odins definitely seem to be pretty strong. Um, so Chocolate Paladins will hopefully be able to get some wins in the next couple of weeks or they might be a bit out of form, I guess. Um, so for the games that happens, YA versus Holy Crusaders, very convincingly 2-0. Uh, Triki versus Kebabs, Kebabs 1-2-0. Uh, quite convincingly in a way, we'll discuss that later. Uh, we got Munchers versus Love and Devotion, interesting match, 1-1. And then like I said, Chocolate Paladins versus Odin's Legion, 2-0 by Odin's Legions. And I gotta say, especially their defense, they played fair, fair, very well. They actually defended the A and the B point. Um, and didn't even give up those. So uh, that's what happened with the games. Um, so what do you think? So what do you guys think about this division right now? The standings? Any of the games you've watched? Um, this division actually is looking uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Like there's still many good teams uh, competing in this division, and um, I think the top four or top five teams you could say in this division is really good mm -hmm. and also there's uh, new teams to the roster as well like to this uh, tournament like baguette munchers mm -hmm. uh, i want to see where they are gonna reach actually mm. uh, but there's some ups and downs as well like for example uh, chocolate paladins i think maybe it's they change some of their roster members I think this is uh, maybe they were they're done a bit. They still need to work on the teamwork. Um, for example, uh, Odin's Legions, uh, they're doing really good so far. Yeah. Uh, didn't expect uh, they would uh, like be winning all their games so far. I don't know what who were their opponents. Uh, like so far, have been like if they were facing uh, strong opponents or not. Mm. But they're definitely stronger than last season. Yeah. Uh, for yeah as well, it's really good team. Uh, I expect that they might be top three in this division. Mm -hmm. uh, for kebabs, uh, really, really, really strong team. Uh, from from the llamas and some uh, other players from other teams. Uh, if they don't troll, <laughs> I think they will get top one. Uh, that's what I think about the division for now. Yeah. Uh, but the the teams are really good. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I'm especially surprised by YAA. I gotta say, uh, we have to play them with Triarchy next next Sunday, and uh, I'm a bit scared. I'll be honest with you. Um, we'll see. Uh, Roxer, what about you? What do you what do you think about the games you've watched, or what you anything to add to what Mask said? I watched a couple of games, mm -hmm. but the one that caught my eye was definitely Kebabs against Triarchy. I mean, I think everyone, I was like, no, there's no way they're going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way. And they actually went in. I thought they, they're going to restart, but no, they kept on going. And I, and then I was hoping, okay, now Triarchy needs to take advantage of this. They mm -hmm. just need to clap them. And no, it didn't happen. But in the end, it was, I think it was good. It was, it was like something new. I don't know if that was actually the strategy. I think it was more of a troll. Mm -hmm. But in the same time, I think it did work, though, because it's it's not that bad if you look at it. Maybe yeah. if you reset charges and it could work, yeah. Yeah, totally. So for those who haven't watched the game yet, because after this, you're definitely going to have to watch it. Um, game one, uh, Triarchy attacked uh, Kebabs on Core Castle and Kebabs pulled out 15 Grey Hairs and maybe one banner, right? Um, and then they also pulled out 15 Houndsmen, uh, but they started with a Sally with uh, Sense of Fenrir. 
so that's what they brought to the game. Uh, it was really interesting. Um, Triarchy had a hard time attacking the A on the first attack. They couldn't get it. Um, then they went into the city, which I think was pretty smart. They tried to outrotate uh, Kebabs a little bit. Um, eventually got the A point. Then uh, Kebabs was definitely up by a lot of units by that point. Um, and they pulled out all their Houndsmen, tried to fight inside the city, defending the B point. Uh, Triarchy tried to block like the entrance from B to the final. They almost full kept the final, um, but Kebabs was just in time and Triarchy didn't have the units because the Houndsmen are destroying so many things. It's crazy. Like all the dogs that run, um, they just run through everything. And all of your specialist units, they get destroyed. Your heroes get destroyed because the Houndsmen shoot so insanely fast. Whenever you try to look at them, you die basically. Um, yeah, so I think the gray air was something that we might even see more often on certain maps. The hound full houndsman, maybe not, but it was definitely interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I like what Reicher did with the uh, shield unit, imp, imp shields, and went straight to the final. Mm -hmm. I could actually see Reicher actually pulling that off if if they would just focus like lockdown hero by hero because they were coming one by one. Mm -hmm. I could see them. Uh, I could see Reicher winning hundred percent, but. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, I'm also looking forward to like I think the best match in this group that everyone should like look into is Kebabs against Ya. Mm -hmm. Some guys might be saying I'm simping for Ya because they are also in Surf's house, <laughs> but they 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 are a strong force. Like okay, Odin's Legion is there, but I think Ya and Kebabs will be the favorites to advance into Feudal Division actually. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely understand where you're, where that is coming from. We'll have to see how Odin's Legion play against YA and Kebabs. Um, I'll, I'll just have a quick look and see when they actually play against each other. Um, it's not even that far away, I think. Let's see. Mm. Oh yeah, Kebabs versus Odin's Legion next week. So we'll talk more about that game at the end of the podcast. YA Kebabs is in round four. So it will be in two weeks. And uh, let's see, what more do we have? YA versus Odin's Legion in the last round as well. So that might be one that decides like the first, second or third place. Yeah. All right. So yes, that, that's already a pretty cool uh, development that might be going on there. All right. Nice. Um, yeah. So we'll see what happens, what's going to happen. We'll talk more about the next games that will happen on Sunday at the end of this podcast. Um, but definitely an, an, another interesting group to say the least. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching more of those games, playing more of those games even. Um, and we'll see who advances to the to the Fuel Division next season. That will be really exciting. And uh, yeah, we'll see what's going to be at the end of this season. Um, let's go to the Fuel Division then. Because this is where all the magic happens. This is where all the good teams are. Except for one. Because Jacked Ultras, after <laughs> trying to meme every single team by being in the tier list uh, with me, um, they actually got this bandit last week, and this is very sad. Um, I'm pretty sure, despite all the flame that they got, uh, most <laughs> players and, 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 and people that watch the league really enjoy Jack Ultras for like the team that they are. Heather with the better meme, of course, that Nine Fingers brought to us. Um, but Heather will be continuing the slot for the Jack Ultras team with slot blockers. Um, he's basically rebranding the team, rebuilding the team. Um, and because the team captains are the ones that, for me, are like deciding what happens with the team they got the right to say okay Heather will take over this team slot and they will continue in the field division so that's what's going to happen as well um, they will just continue with the two losses that they have right now they got they gave they had to give up a free win against Slavs last week because they weren't able to play um, so that is an update about the field division um, even before it started last week but at least I'm still really happy we still have eight teams and we get to play all the games that we uh, should have in the field division um, so on to the standings before you can uh, say anything about it that you like. Um, first place, unsurprisingly, we have Plebs with two wins on six points, followed by No Beaches and Surf Slayer, also six points, two wins. Um, no Beaches actually used to be in C tier, uh, based on Heather's uh, like opinion. Uh, I think D tier, B -tier? if I'm not mistaken. Ah. D, D. Oh, D tier. Yeah, they might even be D tier. Yeah. Oh man, this is so rough, right? All right, we'll see. Hopefully they end up a bit lower at the end of the season for him. Um, blame Alias. They won and uh, they lost the game on three points. Same for Slavs. They won and lost, but one of those wins is, of course, the free win that they got uh, from Jacked. 
Pondegaard has lost twice, surprisingly. They used to be in the A tier for us before the season started. Then we have slot blockers, previously jacked, also with two losses, and Rose also with two losses. Um, so I guess that there is a few things that are surprising. Um, one of them being Pondegaard. Uh, so I just want to start with Pondegaard, honestly. Um, we know that Pine isn't playing for them this season, and it really seems to have shaken up the team uh, quite a bit. Uh, what do you think, like, watching those games maybe or hearing from from players uh, i i say it a lot actually mm -hmm. and uh, i say it like again uh usually the team really doesn't depend on one player yeah uh if the if, if the team is actually depending on one player it's it's gonna be doomed like for example when uh when you like our last match for example Mm -hmm. I was lagging like really, really hard, and I wasn't uh, able to play in, in the defense mm -hmm. uh, versus Blame Elias. That game was actually like 14 versus 15 in that game. Mm -hmm. And like I'm the main shot caller, but even without me, the team performed really, really, really good, as you can watch from the from the stream. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't, I mean, as long as there is order in the team, um, the team should succeed. I don't know if Pondard is lacking this after Pine left or not, mm -hmm. uh, but if they have order, I still I still think they can like be be at the best and uh, top everyone. Yeah. yeah, I would like to add here mm -hmm. that Pongard did have a rough matchup. Like mm -hmm. the first two matches, I think this is just they they went through hell and now <laughs> from now on it just gets easier I think. Mm -hmm. I still think they're going to be top 4. Yeah, Let's, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think top 4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm so, surprised by no beaches actually. Yeah, no, definitely true. Team, but... Yeah, so so just to conclude about Pondgard and like you said. So the first week they had to play you guys, um Pondgard versus Surf Slayer, 2-0 win for you guys and you guys have clearly been stepping it up this season. Uh, we'll talk more about it later. Um, and the second game for Pond Guard, our match was against Plebs, uh, which is basically the final from, final from last season. And Plebs clearly still won the favor to win the season, for me at least, um, to vote them quite convincingly. Um, so Pond Guard seems to be still like finding their identity as a team without Payan, because he is their team captain, he is their shot caller, he is their star player. Um, but like you said, there's five more rounds and they, they should definitely be able to find wins against the other teams that are not as good as Plebs and Surge are right now. Um, but on to no beaches then, like, they are surprising me, at least. Uh, you as well, then? No beaches uh, this season, actually, they improved. Mm -hmm. And they actually got some new players as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, quite uh, Good players, too. Um, I think they can be also top four for this group. Um, yeah, I think maybe top four. Mm -hmm. They'll be like they won Jack so far and what did they play? Uh, Rose. Uh, Jack and Rose. Uh, Rose. Yeah. 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 yeah so uh, uh, not the best teams, but still they're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So so just to go over the matches because we haven't done that. So uh, Rose versus No Beaches. No Beaches won, like we just said. Uh, Jack versus versus Slavs didn't go through, so Slavs got the win. Uh, Surf Slayer vs Blame Elias, 2-0 win for Surf Slayer. Plebs vs Bond Guard, 2-0 win for Plebs. Right, so those are the games that happened. Um, yeah, so no beaches definitely seem to be pr looking pretty strong. Um, yeah, so it is it is nice to see Maxin taking over the team. He's very experienced. He's been playing with Eclaritis, for example, um, even since our tournament two, I believe. And they've been really improving a lot with the players that they have in their groups that they play with a lot. Um, they also have uh, Arkanoppa and Astrovac, uh, who are two casters as well. They play with Aurora on EU2, and they are a mercenary house there, that's what I know. And they, they just stomp almost any um, any fight in TWs, especially when they attack. So they are they are a strong team for sure. Um, Blame Alias uh, against you guys. Uh, let's talk about that match, because that happened as well. It was an interesting match. Um, were you very confident going into that one? Uh, yeah, we're really confident. We scrimmed, uh, we scrimmed a lot on Correct Castle, mm -hmm. and we had many different ideas for it. But actually, in the in the match we had against Blamelias, we never went on uh, any of our strategies. Mm -hmm. We just uh, 
uh, we just adapted to what uh, we saw and uh, we worked through it inside the game. We didn't actually work on a, we followed the strategy. We didn't actually follow the strategy we had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Was there anything surprising they did that, that you hadn't expected in terms of units or where they tried to fight you? Uh, I would say the Sally out. Mm-hmm. They were uh, they were ready for it, uh, and we actually couldn't make our sally out. Um, they were actually ready for it. Uh, this is what actually the only thing that surprised us in the in the match. I would say mm-hmm. for at- for our attack, I wouldn't say like there is um, many things that surprised us. Mm-hmm. We, it was it was smooth. I would say our attack. Uh, but in, in the defense, I think I would leave it for Roxer because I was just disconnecting and I didn't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. Defense was actually funny because Maz did disconnect like four times and mm-hmm. I was really surprised because they were so ready for our sell out. It's like mm-hmm. they knew we we're gonna sell you out. They, they, they brought Hussars to like the gate, like straight, and as soon as we open it, they're already charging. <laughs> that was really surprised. But yeah, then, um, yeah, that caught us off guard, and they could actually snowball off of that. And then mass DCs as well, and we are just like, I think we were panicked. I was panicking, <laughs> and I was like, okay, just calm down, just calm down, we, we got this, we got this. And then Mac, Mass comes back, he dc it again, and they make a push. We're like, mm-hmm. okay, now, okay, now we have to do everything that we can. Mm-hmm. And somehow, I don't know, we stick to the plan, the plan worked out, we stayed calm, and yeah, just zerk with the calf. <laughs> yeah true yeah so that happened so that was a pretty like uh a game that was not in your favor at least um and and blame i definitely seem to be well prepared and then for the attack something that i really enjoyed about your game there was that you you went you took so much time setting up your attack um and uh, this is something that i've also seen you do a few times in the past and last season as well um do you want to talk more about how you think about setting up the attack because you, you always try to go around um go from different angles what, what is the idea like generally about the strats there uh i mean uh, we usually test the enemy like mm-hmm. first we scout we see where the enemy is positioning and then from that point we start to rotate around to see how they react and from depending on how they react we make our push and our move for example when we played against uh, one guard at the beginning uh, after our first push you can see that we were going towards the supply but we saw like some of them were out of position and then we switched on to mid uh, sorry c and uh, we wiped them out and if you look at um, for example uh, blame illas mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think any team did that, where we go from the camp gate as an attacker, you go to the camp gate and then you go up and you punish their setup mm-hmm. with your range units, basically. Uh, it usually depends on how the enemy reacts to what we're doing and depending on that, we just do our move. Yeah. I would add here, we usually take the time to set up to like see what the enemies bring to the table, what units, where they are, and also like how they position. And then we adapt. We like, cause you can make a plan, but it, it's not gonna go 100% through. If you do it, you're just gonna go like, I don't know where, you're just gonna die. <laughs> so it's, you always need to adapt. And I think that's why we need time. Maybe we take more time than other teams to like see all the details and then. Mm-hmm yeah adapt to it basically yeah yeah so you just yeah. try to find the perfect uh, or almost perfect like approach to the fight that, that you can take especially on the attack then, because on the defense of course you get forced into certain places to defend yes mm-hmm. exactly yeah. all right that's really interesting nice nice to hear that from you guys um all right uh, is there any 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 other team that you'd like to talk about from the field division or any specific match that happened last week Quarto, maybe from you, uh, did you cast any of this? No, I don't see the no, match right? of the no. division this week. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, so 
we'll just talk more about the the, the next couple of matches then uh, after this. Um, all right. Uh, so that was the feudal division as well. Um, yeah, you guys said it. Uh, top four seems to be right now looking like Plaps, No Beaches, Surf Slayer, Blame Alias, uh, but Pond Guard should be able to get in there. Maybe in contest for it. Who knows what Slavs and maybe even Slav Blockers and Rose can do when they improve throughout the season. Um, but Slavs and Rose um, and Project or Slav Blockers uh, definitely seem to be doing the weaker teams right now in the in the division. But again, they're not weak. They're they're strong teams. They're here for a reason. Um, yeah. So that's those. All right. Um, with those out of the way, um, we have some more time, uh, at least a little bit of time, to talk about anything else you'd like to talk about. Um, so, Corto, Mask, Boxer, uh, what would you like to talk about? The next map? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Um, it is Hidden City. All right, the next map. Um, we haven't, uh, there's been a few matches on Hidden City before. Uh, have, have you played it in court tournament? Uh... Uh, no, uh, no maybe, right. the first, maybe the first first court tournament, but mm -hmm. uh, we discover um, this map is not with the CBL uh, parameter. Hmm. So um, I, I, we we don't play on the tournament server yeah. with uh, with this match. So uh, I think it's the first time. Maybe in a, are we tournament? No, 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 no. I think it's the first yeah. time. To yeah, see it might be map. first. I, I, I think it. Uh, there is some. You know, it's it, you can find it somewhere on YouTube. But there is like a, some kind of banana league tournament. I don't know. It was like the very first tournament basically for we played. I think. Um, and they played on Hidden City there once or something. Um, so it has been played, but that's like a long time ago. So we are going to play on Hidden City. It's the first time. Um, we have no idea if it's going to be a good map or a fun map to watch the games on or play on. Um, so Mask and Rockstar, what is your opinion on the map? Uh, maybe you haven't scrimmed it by now. Um, we did actually scrim it. Uh, I think this map is like balanced when it comes to attack and defense. Hmm. Uh, I've also watched it uh, for the Frontier CBL. Yep. Uh, uh, I was looking more into like the Crusaders, how they play this map, mm -hmm. and they play it really good. And like their style is like really, really, really annoying. <laughs> uh, they just force you to leave some position, and if you don't leave it, you will just get punished. Uh, the way they just they play it is really interesting. But this comes with RT, of course. Yeah. Uh, without RT, I think it's gonna be played really different. Mm -hmm. Especially also the unit bands, because the unit bands also uh, makes a lot, a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, for example, our match there is Mudao and the Reaper pan. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be interesting. Like um, it's a anti cav ban and a melee ban. Yeah. Like a good uh, melee unit that's ban. It's gonna be interesting how both teams are gonna be playing it. I don't know much about the other team's bands. Never, never. I don't. I don't think they did it in the captain conclusion yet. Not yeah. So them. yeah, for the uh, let's see. So for slot blockers versus Rose, it's Falco Shenji. Kebabs Odin's is Shenji Falco, and Holy Crusaders versus Bagat Munches is also Falco Shenji. So all other teams so far have been Falco Shenji. Oh, and Love and Devotion Paladins is for Tobarcho Falco Nati. Because Senji is very strong on the last point. Yeah, true. And also on the stairs, I guess. And Falconetti. So um, this map is also known for being very hard to take, for sec, for example, in TWs, because it's so easy to destroy the towers. And Falconetti plus Jeff Lens plus some muskets might allow you to destroy towers and even defend the walls. Maybe some teams might try it. Um, so that's something that's interesting. But like I said, so it, there's definitely a big difference because there's no artillery. Right, so watching the Frontier games, despite how interesting they might be, the strategy might be very different in the end. Um, is there anything you would like to share about your ideas about the map? Knowing that the podcast is going to be out on Thursday before the match <laughs> starts, of course. So um, maybe just talk about the Frontier more, I guess. Uh, I think that uh, like in this map, there is uh, a lot of ways you can defend it. Mm -hmm. um, like you can actually defend it in like around four different places, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, for attackers, you're gonna need to see what they're gonna be doing, and you need to like react to it. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and that's all I can say to be honest. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's good. I wasn't expecting anything more from uh, you. I, I, maybe I, if uh, if I yeah. don't uh, say a mistake <laughs> on frontier, this map on frontier, the def uh, they defend a lot uh, at the bottom of the stair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind, lot of, uh, kind, kind of just like the TWs. Yeah, and kind of similar to Harbor City, right? In, in a way, it's it has a similar setup, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have your two stair uh, mm -hmm. go to the to the to the door, mm -hmm. so you have a, a IRA, yeah, or you you can make a a good defense of fight here. Yeah, and there this is fight yeah, here. Exactly, and then there's also two supplies close by, and same as with Harbor City, you have in Harbor City you have the, the, the side gate, but on um, Sunset you have the like the right. Well, from the attacker's perspective, you have the left siege tower. Uh, that actually allows you to go onto the wall and down on a bit more on the side, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it might be similar there. So um, knowing from last week from Malias, what he told us, of course, as well, is that you try to defend most of the time in places where you can be trapped, pretty obviously. Um, so right behind the walls would be a log logic like location to try that and do that. We've seen on plenty of maps, Sun City, um, Harbor City, that teams try to defend uh, down at the bottom of the staircases. So uh, I do expect defenses there, but we've also seen plenty of times, even from you guys on Harbor City, that you also can try to defend inside the city. Um, and especially this map, I think there's plenty of places where you can also try to defend inside the city, even after having lost maybe C point or um, even before, oh, sorry, even after having lost B point or even before um, uh, you try to defend the B point. So yeah, I'm looking forward to your games already. Um, it's going to get me hyped uh, for the next one. Um, Thank you. Yeah, that's going to be good. All right. Um, that being said, maybe we should just look into the games that are going to happen. Uh, we talked about some of the bands. I'll, I'll also tell you all of the predictions from the Discord uh, right away because we are doing the vote there. If you are not on the Discord yet, make sure to join it. Um, it is fun there. It is really fun. All right. So for the Fuel Division on Hidden City on June 12th, this Sunday, on 7.00 CEST, we got slot blockers versus Rose. Uh, currently, twenty to thirty-six for Rose in favor of Rose. So it's going to be an interesting game because it might decide which of these two teams uh, will maybe break through to the top four or stay at the bottom. At eight, we got No Beaches versus Surf Slayer. Your game. It's twenty-one for No Beaches and thirty-four for Surf Slayer. So Surf Slayer are the favorites here. Um, and this is going to be very interesting because you guys are both with two wins. Um, so this will decide if one of you takes a loss uh, at the end of the day. Then we got Blame Alias versus Plaps, another interesting game because these are also two top four teams and also the first and third place teams from last season. It's 12 for Blame Alias, 37 for Plaps. At 10 we got Slavs versus Pondguard, two teams that are struggling right now. Pondguard, the clear favorites, according to the vote, it's 44 to 8 for Pondguard. For the Rustic Division, we got Kebabs versus Odin's Legion, 38 to 14 for Kebabs. We got Triarchy versus YAA, 8 to 46 for YAA, to no surprise. So Kebabs versus Odin's Legion, for Odin's Legion, very interesting map or matchup, uh, I should say. Holy Crusaders versus Baguette Mungers on uh, 9, 16 to 33 for Baguette Mungers. Um, also another interesting match for like the middle of the pack right now. Uh, Love and Devotion versus Chocolate Paladins. This will be Chocolate Paladins' chance to like get up there and see if they can actually like compete for the top three places. Love and Devotion is the favorite though, with 33 to 16. Then we have Impact versus Crypta. Impact, very clear favorites, 45 to five to five votes. Um, but Crypta, I'm confident in them. They might be able to tie them, perhaps even win it. Uh, looking for team against Pelio Old School. Um, looking for team only getting the four votes and 43 votes for Pelio Old School. So very obvious winner there it seems like and Argonaut Argonautis versus Divinity a little bit more close 30 to 15 uh, at the end of the day uh, I think that match will also be pretty fun to look at with both teams being still good in the standings um, so let's just go to because we've talked about Kebabs uh, YAA and Odin's Legion um, two of those teams will be playing each other um, we've talked about it already um, play in division, we'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen. Same for the other games in the Rustic Division. So I would like to focus on the Feudal Division games with you guys. Um, Slop Blockers versus Rose. Uh, what do you think is going to win it? Mask? I think it will be a tie. A tie? If Slop Blockers are good, I think mm -hmm. it will be a tie, yeah. Alright. 
Rockstar, you? I, I would agree. I think it's gonna be Tyler. Yeah. All right. I mean, you're, you're clearly you're clearly on the same team here. All right, uh, Corto. <laughs> <laughs> I can go first for then. I don't know. Blame Elias and Plebs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I. I think Plebs will win two mm-hmm. all. But th- there's something itching me that it's gonna be tie. I don't know. Mm. Interesting. It's gonna it be close. Be a I close don't know. match. Yeah, it might be a close match, but I would say Plebs will win two all. Mm-hmm. I get Corta. What, what do you think? But mm-hmm. well, Block uh, have a, a change uh, this week, so mm-hmm. maybe the team uh, will not uh, totally aware. So for me, I'm, I'm always uh, have a, a, a good chance. Mm-hmm. And then Blame Elias versus Plebs? Oh, uh, Blame Elias, Pleb. I don't, I don't really know Blame Elias, so, and uh, I know Pleb, so I will say Pleb. All right, yeah, that's, it's, it's easy. They are the, the, for sure the favorites right now. Uh, Slash versus Pondgard. What do you guys think? Mm, I would say Pondgard. Yeah. yeah. Well, Slavs are good as well, but I would say Pondgard. Mm-hmm. I would agree. I think Pongard will take this one. They have to take this one. Mm-hmm. Slavs is a good team. I just think that Pongard has the experience. Yeah, uh, that is interesting though what you're saying. They have to take it basically, right, for Pongard. I mean, if they lose this one as well, three losses in a row, that's pretty rough. I mean, of course you can always come back from it, but um, it does mean that it would be really hard for them to uh, go back to the top four uh, if they were to lose against Slavs. So it is a pretty pretty important game for Pondgard this Sunday. Uh, no Beach versus Surfslayer is a really big game. Blamelias versus Plaps is a really big game. And Slot Blocker versus Rose just as well because they want to get out of those bottom places. Um, no Beach versus Surfslayer then. Um, who do you guys think is going to win this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I mean, they should always be like, you should always think that uh, like you're the best and uh, mm-hmm. you should work on it. And like, of course, you sh- shouldn't underestimate them. They're a really yeah. good team. Uh, like, we should always think that you should two or everyone. Yeah, like Roxas sure. says. Yeah, you, you should definitely you should have to aim to at least two them, right? Because if you're planning to lose, it's isn't a good start. So, yeah. I, actually, I would like to widen this uh, topic a little bit because right now it's it's you guys, Surf Slayer, Plaps, and No Beaches in the top three, uh, both without loss. So. Uh, and, and, and this will change uh, after the Sunday because two of those three teams are fighting each other. So looking at those three teams, what, according to you guys, is, is like the strong points or the weak points from those three teams? And why do you think it's going to be you versus Plebs at the end of this season for the win? I mean, for no bitches, they're really good. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, versus Rose, uh, I didn't expect this outcome to be. Hmm. I mean, to be honest, Rose is not a really bad team, like people think. Like a lot of people say that Rose is a really bad team, but uh, when it comes to Rose, to be honest, out of all teams uh, that participate in tournaments, mm-hmm. uh, they're the only team that is slowly and consistently improving. Hmm. Uh, like even till now, they're still uh, slowly improving. Uh, but I didn't really think the like the match would be as close as it was uh, for No Beach's attack versus uh, Rose. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to Plebs, Plebs is, uh, has been really strong lately. Uh, also versus Pongard, um, I think it was the attack if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was close. Uh, the units were really close. The problem with Kura Castle is that you only need one good wipe mm-hmm. as an attacker, so you can cap the camp. Yeah. And this is what basically Plebs did against Pongard. They had uh, one good wipe and they won it. Mm-hmm. Um, if it was a different map where you can defend two points, for example, Warford, for example, or Hidden City, yeah. or Hailing Fjord, uh, I think it might have been different. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would have been depending on the last push they would do because it was like 400 units versus 400 units when uh, Plebs capped the Kura Castle mm-hmm. on the attack. Yeah. Um, 
But for clubs, they usually work as a group, like full 15, and they push together into one point. Mm -hmm. They don't usually split push or something like that. They always work as a one pack and they move together. Mm -hmm. And they do it uh, good. Uh, but it can be countered, of course. Um, this we will see for our future match against them. <laughs> Yeah, definitely hope so. So basically, you're saying so. Plus, is, is is the powerhouse like the team that groups together and fights together and does that ex exceptionally well. They they are really strong in fights. We've seen that especially against Bondgard. I agree with that. Um, then you're saying that Sir Slayer is more of the like the smart team. I would say trying to figure out where to fight and what to fight and how to fight. Um, and No Beach is is a new team basically. But the, yeah, they're surprising. Yeah, just surprising. I forget it right now. I think. Um, depending on how they do against you, of course, uh, on this Sunday. But yeah, interesting right. analysis. Corto, anything you'd like to, to add that? Yeah, Yeah. to back on the prediction, the Beaches vs. Sarslayer. Because mm -hmm. um, the Beaches uh, have a, a strong player, an experienced player, but uh, Sarslayer have um, a best team play. Mm. Because they have, uh, it's what you say, they, they have an experience, and the Beaches actually have not a lot of experience. Yeah. So maybe it's... Uh, it's on this uh, the the difference will make. Yeah, definitely might make a difference for sure. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think it's an interesting point. Maybe we should talk somewhere later about it, uh, not in this podcast, but uh, like depending on the map you said, mass claims it might favor some teams, right? Because uh, you, you're looking at maps like how many points can you defend and how many fights do you have to win? And sometimes if it's just one big fight and that wins you that that map on the attack or the defense, that makes it maybe more favor towards teams like Plebs where teams like Nobichius or Sursler would like to fight with more split pushes, uh, they are more favored into maps that actually fight over different places. So that is uh, definitely another way to look at the maps and the teams. Um, and we'll do that more in the future, I hope. Um, so thank you for adding that perspective as well. Um, we are nearing or getting over one hour in this podcast. So um, I, we, we have to wrap it up somehow. Uh, so we're going to do that right now. Um, but before we conclude it, um, Mask and Rockstar, um, you've been playing in a quite a few tournaments now. Um, CB Rivals is definitely going to continue for a long time, I hope. Um, what specifically do you like about CB Rivals uh, also looking to the future? Uh, honestly, I like the unit ban. Uh, it uh, brings like, uh, if you like, for example, certain maps for example, uh, Falcos are really good at it. Mm. Some maps are not. If you ban like Falcos in a good map for a Falco, you need to make other strategies. You need to find a new way to play it, which is really good. Um, about the weapons, I don't know if there should be weapon ban or not, but as of right now, like there is a lot of weapons that is good. Uh, I think also next season, like I like how they rework the rune system. Mm -hmm. uh, they really make it, made it like into armor thing, not weapon thing. Like this season, for example, Nodachi rune is good. Polax rune is really broken. Uh, for next season, it's gonna be more about armor. So like they brought the balance more into uh, armor for weapons. I don't know how to explain it, but like the weapons, it depends on the runes you pick for the armor, basically. Mm -hmm. It brings more balance to the weapons, in my opinion. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Yeah, Roxer, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I like uh, CBL because it's different than CBL, like in terms of room. So that something definitely like you you don't want to play the same thing every time, right? And CBL rules don't really change much. So that's that's a big up and. What I'm looking forward to is playoff system. I know, I know, it's like maybe too early, but mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have it in. I don't know, maybe three, four seasons, maybe two, I don't know, maybe next season. Yeah. <laughs> where, yeah, you just get into like small playoffs, like short one, maybe later on, like maybe a, a bit longer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's like best of five or something. I don't know. Uh, I would really love to see that. I think that would be a big hype as well. I don't know. That's just what I think. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I want to add one more thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really don't like the not that limit because uh, like many teams right now, they just go suicide. 
Yeah, true. On uh, units and then they make their push. It's it's not how the game is supposed to be played, in my opinion. Uh, if you do something like this, you should be punished. You know, you can still do it with that limit, but you will be punished for it. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think this should be added for the future as well for the CB rivals, in my opinion. Um, it it really bring like if there, if there is a flame unit, for example, mm-hmm. you need to push into it. You know, and you need to find your ways to kill the flame unit and win the push. Uh, with the flame unit alive, you know. But you can, what you can just do is you can, for example, go suicide on the flame unit. And especially in the CB rivals, there is like no artillery, so mm-hmm. you cannot buy time. There is a lot of time, so you can suicide like three, four, five times as much as you want. But of course, there is the, uh, the death timer will increase, mm-hmm. so you need to keep that in mind. Uh, but like I said, it's just you need to find your way to push when these units are alive, you know. Because yeah. if you just go suicide on them, it's just not how the game is supposed to be played. Yeah, it's, it's not too funny. Yeah, definitely true. It's something that we see more of, more often now, especially with the Polwax immunity, the, the Norachi immunity. Um, it's just sometimes too easy maybe to dive, uh, especially humans mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. So, yeah, yeah, so the Seabrook Rivals will definitely change throughout the, the seasons for sure. Um, I hope to add another play, playoff seasons in the future. We had it last season, of course. It was really fun, those two best of fives. Um, this season is a bit shorter. Um, we'll see what happens next season. But also, we're planning on doing the core tournament together with CB Rivals. The core tournament might be like a Champions League format, more of a tournament. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but Corto, you wanted to add something? Uh, yes, yeah, to come back about what my friend said mm-hmm. about um, the death limit and uh, to, to, to go to suicide in the, in the unit. Uh, so you, you think the, the death timer uh, is not enough? to counterbalance the, mm. the type of move? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, in certain maps, like, for ex- I'll give an example for Correct Castle, for example. Um, as a defender, if you suicide, you know, uh, it will punish you more because, like I said, Correct Castle uh, is like one way, one push. And if you die for suiciding, your death timer is going to be really high. Mm-hmm. And if they make their push, you cannot respawn fast and go to the point, you know? You need to wait for the respawn because you already died. Um, if the artillery is involved, I would say that may, depending on the strategy, of course, of the teams and the maps, it would be um, more balanced, but still I wouldn't like to see artillery involved in the tournaments. Uh, like we have CBL for that, <laughs> but for sure the um, like the death limit should be added in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. interesting, interesting Fine. perspective. Yeah. Well, we'll think about it for sure. All right, thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, it is time to wrap it up now. We're nearing uh, 70 minutes, so that's plenty of time for people to to listen to or to watch. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think it's been really interesting to talk to you guys uh, about your thoughts into the team, into the league, the divisions, um, and also the future. Um, I wish you best of luck on next next Sunday against No Beaches. Um, I trust it will be two amazing games for sure. Um, and we'll see what happens after that. Um, Corto, anything else you would like to add before we conclude this podcast? No, it's okay for me. <laughs> yeah all right all good thank yeah. you Corto as well for joining me again on this one uh, Mask and Roxor any final closing words from you guys uh, I would like to thank you guys uh, like CB and Corto for your uh, work in doing the tournaments you guys really do a good job and it uh, really brings uh, fun for the players that is playing the game especially like uh, sometimes it gets boring and the tournaments uh, actually bring fun to the game and you guys are doing a really good job in organizing it and uh, doing the work. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I just right. want to say watch out for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. With that concluded, uh, look forward to any of the Source Layer games in the future for the Sea Rivals League. And also look forward to um, any of the matches that will happen on this Sunday. And the rest of the season. And then also to the following season because it's, it's not going to stop here, guys. We will continue this uh, for a really long time, I hope. Um, in order to do that, make sure to like, subscribe, follow any of these guys as well. Mass Flames, you've got a YouTube channel, right? Rockstar, do you have one as well? 
Yeah, I have Twitch, but nice. I'm not really active. It doesn't matter. Just go to Rockstar Twitch and just follow him. Uh, maybe he will stream more if you if, if you follow him. Um, Corto, you're not on any socials yet, but maybe you get there or you'll stream with Mr. Nara, of course. So follow Mr. Nara. You can listen more to Corto with his beautiful French voice. Um, it's better than mine, for sure. Um, and for me, um, if you want to support the CB Rifles, uh, make sure to go to the Patreon page. Uh, you can support me through there. Um, that's it, guys. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. I'm seeing all red. Two bullets in the gun, one shot to the head. I need a plan.